Hello guys, this is Campbell Chess. I hope you've had a fairly decent day so far as I have. Uh, I got to go to the gym and now I'm getting to make a video. So those are uh, two things that kind of made my day a little bit better. Um, but anyway, let's get into the idea of today's video, which is uh, the games I've been playing. I have like 70 games that I've been playing right now that are like daily games, um, but 52 of them are my turn to move. So I was just gonna go through some of those and show you all my thought processes and how I've been doing it in those games. So for this first game, I'm going against a 1300 rated player. And as you can see, their pieces are far more active than mine. So the main thing that I wanna do is I wanna be able to move to d7 to try and ask for a queen trade, but I know that if I do that, they're probably just gonna to move to, to c5. And then I won't get the queen trade that I want, and also my queen will be on an open file where their rook could probably come over and start harassing my queen. So I don't really want to go for a queen trade necessarily right now. What I did think of doing, though, is going knight to d5, because now if they try and take my pawn on c4, I will just respond by taking the bishop on f4, and then I'll kind of have some counterplay because... They will have the the B file, but I will have the G file to work with because they take, I take, and then they have to retake basically or else they're down a piece. So they retake with the pawn on G3, they take, and then I kind of have uh, an open file to harass White's king with. So that would work uh, pretty well for, for this game. There's no other idea that I can see that's better, and if y'all do find any ideas that I didn't see, feel free to, to tell me in the comments. But also, let's just say that after I do move knight to d5, then they just decide not to take the pawn and instead not allow me to, to take the bishop. So they move their bishop, let's say, to, to d2 or e3. In that case, if it's e3, then I would be more inclined to, to just take to mess up uh, the, the kingside pawn structure. If they move it to d2, however, uh, I think that I would probably just take the pawn on b3. And if they take with the rook, then I'm just going to move my rook from a8 to b8 to challenge their rook on the b file. And then if they take my rook, then I'll just take theirs. But if they don't, then it'll just be, you know, stare off between the two rooks on the b file. Going on to game number two here, playing against an 1100 rated player. Um, and going against my most hated uh, opening to go against. I hate going against the Scotch game, and I can just never seem to defend against it very well. But looking at this opening, uh, it looks like they're going after my e5 pawn, and if I try and just defend against that by going d6, then they're just going to take, and then I'm going to kind of have to retake because they have so much pressure. Uh, so if I retake, then there's going to be an open open file. Let me just show you. There's going to be an open file where they can just take my queen, and then I'll have lost my right my uh, rights to castling. So I don't really want to to let that happen. So I can't really go d6, and if I just you know play something like knight to f6, trying to develop my pieces, then they are just going to simply take take the pawn, threaten my knight, and then I'm going to have to maybe try and go after this pawn just to, to not be down material and not let them get too much of a center. But that is also kind of dangerous as well because there's not really too many places that my knight can go after that. You know, if they try and threaten my knight, then maybe I could jump to, to c5. But I just don't really like how that looks very much. I don't really want my, my knight to be jumping around everywhere. So um, the, the move that I just thought to do is to just take the pawn on d4, and yes, they're probably going to retake after I take, they're probably going to retake with the knight, and then I might want to uh, retake with my knight, maybe, or maybe not. You know, if if they retake with the knight, then I might just play something like um, bishop to, to c5 and just continue development, and that would also be kind of useful because then after the knight moves at some point, or even if it doesn't move, I'm still eyeing this weak f2 pawn. So that's probably going to be my plan for, for this, this game. Now for game number three, this is me going against a 300 rated player. 
And just for some context, they decided to fianchetta their light square bishop on g2. I took the pawn on b2, and then they moved their rook to b1 to fight for this b-file. And so from here, my first idea was, well, let's just take the rook, and then we can just get that over with, and maybe they'll take my, my rook back with the queen. But this would give them control of the b-file, and maybe their queen could come down to to b7 at some point and try and take my, my pawns away and maybe try to promote theirs after that. So I thought better of that. Uh, and then my second idea was, well, let's just take the pawn on c2 with the bishop. This line is way more complicated, but basically my idea here, if they didn't you know, move the queen out of the way, was they take my rook, I take their queen, they check my king, I move, they take my other rook, and then here I just back my bishop up, up um, and then I took their, their queen for, for two of my, or for both my rooks. Which I don't necessarily mind because this would give my queen an opportunity to be one of the, the, uh, the best pieces on the board after, let's say, they try and move their rook over here to, to get it active again. Then I could potentially do something like taking the pawn on, um, on a3. And then I would be threatening to pick up the knight, but I would also be defending the, the pawn on a7. And so I would have a nice pawn, pawn uh, that's not being blocked so I could try and promote later on as well. So that was my other option, was that whole line. And that's assuming that they they um, take the, the rook, of course. They, they might not take the rook and move their queen somewhere else, which in that case maybe it wasn't the best idea, but... In any case, I could potentially still take the rook with my bishop at that point if they, let's say, moved here or something like that. Um, but the, the third option was the one that I went with, and that was going queen takes on a3, because this not only defends the rook from getting taken, because if they take my rook now, I'm going to pick up this, this uh, undefended knight, check the king, and once they move, move the queen here, or they move the king over here, then I'm just going to pick up the rook for, uh, not for free, but I'm just going to pick up the, the rook as well, and then be up a, a whole knight. So uh, they shouldn't take the rook here, but they do need to, to defend the, the knight now. So that kind of the, puts the pressure on them, and they're definitely not getting my rook off the b-file anytime soon now. So they're not uh, regaining control of the b-file at all. So this is probably the best option for me. And also, if they try and go here, something like that, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up that free knight again. So nothing to worry about here. And for the last game here, this is me going against an 800-rated player. And this dude is actually, uh, he's the one that's impressed me the most so far. Um, despite his rating, he's actually played well above his rating um, and kept the game pretty even up until this point. Um... So just to show y'all what was going on a few moves before, so uh, I I saw that I couldn't really get uh, my pieces um, attacking the king very well because he had his knight and his queen guarding the, the king. So I thought let's just march this pawn up to kind of constrict constrict this little area into a smaller space. And I noticed well I can't really do anything. Still really my pieces can't really get in anywhere so I'm going to try and bring my knight into the game maybe having one more piece will help me finish finish the game off and so he decides to move bishop b7 here and this is where I find uh, a, a winning tactic so basically if I move knight here um, then he's kind of forced to take the knight with his knight because his king, let's just go into the, the analyzing of this. Uh, his king can't really go anywhere. If he tries to go here, my bishop's guarding there. If he tries either of these spaces, my rook is there. So that knight basically has to go or else he's losing the game. So he can either take with the queen, which you don't want to do because then I'm just going to take with this pawn or this pawn and the game's basically going to be over. Or he can take with the knight. So I'm assuming he's going to want to take with the knight. And then here, instead of taking with the g-pawn, because if I take with the g-pawn, then that will just allow him counterplay, you know, getting down here and harassing my king. So I'm going to take with the e-pawn here to keep the position as closed as possible. 
and now I'm threatening his queen. So his queen is, is getting uh, pretty constricted as well. She can't go here because of my bishop, here because of my rook or bishop, or either of these two places. And you don't want to take the pawn or this pawn because then I'm just going to take with my queen. So any other moves uh, are this one and this one. And you don't want to move to c7 because then I will just get their, their uh, queen for free. So the only real move for the queen is to d7 here. Now after I've gotten the, the queen out of the way by uh, making them move to d7, then there is only one option that I can see uh, for finishing off this game, and that is to push to f7. Now the idea of this is that um, they can't really take the pawn still because if they take with the pawn with the queen, then I'm just going to checkmate them by retaking with my queen, and they'll just be checkmate. So uh, the only move that they can really do here is to move the king up to g7, and after they move the king up to g7, then I will deliver checkmate by moving queen to f6, and that is a pretty nice uh, checkmate. It's, it's kind of a smothers mate. It's just a little three by three um, little box that I have the the king in the middle of. So uh, that's how I found the 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 end of this game. So I'm just going to move my knight to f6, and let's see how he responds. And if you made it this far in this video, I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy uh, this kind of content. I uh, intend on continuing to put out uh, content frequently, so I hope y'all are looking forward to that. Um, as I said, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.